Well, good evening, friends. Uh, this evening's edition of Virtual Vespers is just a, a little different in that I'm not coming to you live tonight. I uh, had to be with Cole for a sort of a kindergarten parade at Kitty Stone, so I recorded this earlier this afternoon, but still wanted to be sure that we had time to be with one another this evening for prayer and, and for uh, the reading of Scripture and a few uh, announcements. Uh, first, I want to tell you again uh, about our worship, our virtual experience of worship. I hope you're being able you're able to tune into those, whether it's here on Facebook, uh, on YouTube, through the link we email you. We're going to be continuing that through the rest of this month. So that'll be this coming Sunday and then on the 31st. And I'll say a little bit more about this later, but we're hoping our plan is right now that we will rejoin one another in a modified way on June 7th. And I'll again speak about that in just a minute. I also want to just say a word of appreciation as I have on many of these occasions for your continued faithful commitment and support of the church. Uh, giving is strong. We're able to do a great many things. Continuing business as usual here at the church in the best ways we can in terms of supporting our missions and our ministries. And, and let me just say, I am very thankful uh, for your commitment uh, in that and, and very uh, proud uh, that our church has been able to continue uh, in, in doing the things that we do, even if we're not able to be physically together for worship. I also want to say a word of just congratulations to everyone who's graduating uh, this spring. I know uh, I'm among them graduating with my doctorate. Our graduate uh, graduation ceremony was supposed to be a couple of weeks ago, and it's been moved to August. Uh, but I know this week that uh, our uh, school here in the community, Pleasant Valley, will be graduating uh, tomorrow. And one special graduate there, Hattie Ewing, we want to say um, just congratulations to you, Hattie. We know you worked hard, and that while this isn't the time and the way you, or you'd hope to graduate, we're still proud of you. Uh, and behind you and just want to wish you congratulations. Now, as I alluded to just a minute ago about reopening on June 7th, I met with the deacons this past Sunday uh, to, to go over a plan that I've been putting together uh, and we're still tweaking it a little bit, getting some language right, getting some time right, and still watching numbers and those sorts of things as we look forward to preparing for coming back together. So. Uh, some of this I told you last week, but I want to just reemphasize it a little bit, maybe with a, a little more uh, tuned up language. First of all, you should be hearing, if you haven't already, uh, from your family's deacon this week about this plan. And in particular, you should be hearing from them about uh, what time of service you might be willing to attend, or if you feel comfortable to attend, those sorts of things. Uh, and the reason we're going to be asking that is we're likely going to be moving to two services uh, for the, the at least the short-term future as we try to uh, be careful and wise and, and safe in reopening. So uh, our plans right now are to reopen for corporate worship on June 7th. And I want to make that language a little more clear. To reopen for corporate worship, I mean Sunday mornings. We'll continue, uh, at, probably at least through the summer, doing our Wednesday evenings as we are now, these virtual Vespers. And, and I know some of you may be thinking, well, Wednesday evenings are a little smaller gatherings anyhow. But the point there is trying to limit the time between services, especially during the week as our daycare will be using uh, the facilities where we normally gather uh, for our Wednesday evening time. And as we're entering into the summer, our Wednesday evening numbers are already pretty low as we uh, put our meals on pause uh, during the summer. People are traveling, although I know not as much now. But still, uh, this will be a, an easier thing for us to navigate in the coming week. So we will be reopening for corporate worship. Now, Sunday school classes will be uh, free to meet in other locations in practicing social distancing. We're trying to really keep our building uh, safe for when we can. We want to be able, when we have the all clear, when we all feel like we do, to be able to, as soon as possible, come back together completely uh, as much as close to normal as we can. 
and and what seems to be the best way to do that is to to limit our uh, uh, sort of coming together as normal for a while to make sure that things begin to um, begin to decline as far as infection rates and that sort of thing. So, uh, so I, I want to be clear when I say that we'll be coming back together for corporate worship on June seventh. And the way we're thinking about doing this is again with two services, uh, most likely at nine and ten thirty or nine thirty and eleven. We'll be working that out, and you'll be hearing about that as soon as we uh, finalize those things. We uh, again, I'll be meeting with our deacons again this coming Sunday to talk some about that. Some of you may be wondering why June seventh? Why not now? You probably have friends, family who have been going back to church, hearing about churches reopening. Well, quite honestly, uh, it, one, I, I think it's too soon. That's just me. But also because I, I think we need the time to prepare for reopening. And that's very true. We're going to be trying to relocate our services out to the CMC for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it, it, it's a more wide open space, hard surfaces that are easier to clean and disinfect. Uh, and it will give us a little more flexibility uh, in terms of how we'll be using that space for worship, because worship is going to look different. Another thing is, as you probably remember, we had a committee, a team called the R and R team, that was uh, meeting and talking about making some renovations and repairs to our sanctuary. Well, now's a great time for them to begin thinking about, well, maybe we can move forward with that, because after all, we'll have to be out of our sanctuary while those renovations and repairs are happening. So we may be meeting in the CMC, in the gym, uh, a little longer term than uh, just through this COVID-19 pandemic. So this may be a great time for them to begin their work uh, as well. So now, that being said, the reason June 7th, it gives us time uh, to prepare the gym. Chris Cheatwood, Mike Duncan are working on uh, getting things ready, not only for just sound, but so we're able to live stream, so we're able to uh, coordinate worship in a, uh, in really what's going to have to be a more innovative and creative way over these next uh, couple of weeks. It will also give us the opportunity to uh, allow the daycare to have sort of their rhythm. They reopen this week. It'll give them their time to find their rhythm with cleaning, uh, where the kids are, how they're going to be. We want to make sure that our kids in this daycare, the kids that our community entrust to our daycare into this building, are, are taken care of and have the safest possible environment, as well as those who come back to worship on Sunday morning will have the safest and cleanest possible uh, environment. So with all that going on, we plan to reopen June 7th in the CMC, likely over two services. We'll be limiting access points into the church. So most likely, uh, if you know the building, the back parking lot through the double glass doors, uh, and then into the gym. Those doors will be open and closed by only particular individuals to limit uh, contact with those. And as time progresses, as is needed, we'll open other entrances, make other ways into the building. Uh, during that time, if places are closed off and things, we'll just ask that you stay out of those again. Not so much to say we're afraid of anybody going in there, but to just limit our access so we know what places, what surfaces we need to make sure we're disinfecting, those sorts of things. During those services, uh, we will be respecting social distancing. Uh, we'll be moving chairs into certain patterns once we kind of get a, a hang of that for households and for individuals. Um, there will be some uh, face masks available. I have a case of those someone donated to us here at the church. Uh, I'd encourage you to wear those. I know for some of us, uh, it's it's uncomfortable. We don't we, we just don't feel right doing it. Uh, but the CDC you know recommends it. I'm going to recommend it and encourage it to you uh, during that time. And again, if you don't have one, you want one, we'll have one uh, available uh, here at the church. Hand sanitizing stations will have those, and we'll be working on plans for our ushers or deacons to assist with seating uh, and recessing, leaving the building, following those services to help kind of keep those practices in place. Uh, I'm sure maybe if you've been following some of the news as I have, uh, churches, there have been a, a number of cases since Georgia has reopened of churches that met back for worship, and there have been cases now of COVID-19 in those congregations. So we want to take, we want to take our time, 
We want to follow all of our guidelines, and we want to be we want to be wise and careful. As I've been explaining from the beginning, this is the same way we might deal with inclement weather. We want to be as prepared as possible, and praying that we don't need whatever it is that we are preparing for. Uh, so that that's kind of some of the big points. These short these services will likely be shorter. One, just to limit our time of possible exposure. Uh, two, because it'll be different. We won't have some of the things like choir singing, uh, you know, limited sort of, uh, or maybe possibly no congregational singing. And I know that bums you out, but we'll be talking about that as we look more at, at the information and things that are coming out. And this will keep our exposure limited and give us more time to clean between services, that sort of thing. And then we'll have... Uh, baskets in particular places for your tithes and offerings or of course as so many of you are already finding out you can just give online we've got that down pat now and it's working fantastic so let me encourage you uh, to do that now you're going to have some questions uh, i know you will i hope if uh, as you've been talking to your deacons this week or as they contact you or you contact them you'll give them those questions again we'll be meeting uh, together again sunday morning uh, to discuss some feedback from you to talk about some possibilities of what we might do. Some of these things, this is all the tentative plan. So as we talk, and hopefully as I meet maybe again with you on next Wednesday uh, for Virtual Vespers, we can talk a little bit more about the specifics of those plans. But that's what we have so far. I hope you'll be uh, uh, open-minded in prayer for how we'll come back together. And I know, I know you're ready. I'm ready. We're all ready to be back for worship. Uh, but again, we want to be as safe and as wise as we can be going forward. So with that in mind, that's for uh, Sunday morning corporate worship. And again, for the foreseeable future, we'll continue our Wednesday evenings uh, in this format of these virtual Vespers. Again, for a number of reasons, it's there's no real reason for us to rush back for Wednesday evening services in the summer. Uh, it gives us time between our Sunday morning services. It, it, it drastically reduces our chance of exposure to our daycare kids and to us from them on Wednesday evenings. And this is just uh, this is working well for us, I think. So uh, as we come together, though, this evening for this time of prayer and reflection, I, I want to ask that you join me in a word of prayer and invocation. So let's pray. Holy God, we're thankful for just a time in the middle of our weeks, Lord, when perhaps every day seems just like the last, but Lord, when every day brings a new set of challenges. God, we're grateful for a time to pause, a time to be silent, a time to listen, Lord, and a time to be together, even though it's virtually through this format. God, we pray for your spirit to be with us in this time as we come together, as we listen, as we pray. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. So I don't know about you, but as we were talking about thinking about coming together, I've been thinking about what it means to have sanctuary. What it means to gather together in a sanctuary, to find a literal holy place. For me, over these last few weeks, that, that holy place has has been the small porch swing on our front porch at home. Uh, it's not really all that complicated, nothing, frankly, particularly comfortable about it. It's just an old wooden swing suspended from the roof by couple of chains, probably a kit someone bought at Lowe's when the house was built. A couple of years back, I, I screwed a piece of pressure-treated 2 by 4 onto the railing of the porch, just wide enough for my cup of coffee and maybe a Bible or a book. But as I've sat out there and listened to the creak of the chain against the, the eye bolts that are holding it to the roof, I've begun to hear other things, the, the buzz of, of bees, the singing of birds, the, the running of lizards across the asphalt shingles on my roof. I've been able to stop and listen to 
creation around me, to, to the presence of God around me. And I thought about that as we've been thinking and praying more and more about the possibility of returning to our sanctuary, the, the holy place, the room where we worship. I thought about all the times where, at least I as a pastor, have been so busy, so, so caught up in doing the work of church, that I've, I've missed in that holy space the presence of God. Someone told me uh, earlier this week that they said, you know, Chris, I, it's maybe the wrong way to think about things, but maybe it's been good to have this time away from church, to, to be away from the feeling of obligation, to be away from uh, just the regular repeated rhythms of religion, to remind us uh, what is good, what is holy what it is we're doing in the first place. I don't think they're wrong. The old saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder, has some truth to it. But my hope is that you're not just longing for a time to come back to the holy space, the sanctuary of our church, but that perhaps even in the middle of this quarantine, where whether you've got a a house full of family that, that's always on, always running, always getting into stuff. Maybe maybe you're there in your home, alone, counting the days as they sort of just begin to gray into one another. I hope you're able to find sanctuary, holy space, even in these days that seem so alike each other and so unlike the others that came before. And thinking about that, I wanted to share with you a poem uh, from one of my favorite poets, Mary Oliver. Uh, it's one of my favorites of hers. It's called what is, what, what is There Beyond Knowing? And I think the first time I read this poem, I read it as a question. What is there beyond knowing? But it's not a question. What is there beyond knowing. What is there beyond knowing that keeps calling to me? I can't turn in any direction, but it's there. I don't mean the leaves grip and shine or even the thrush's silk song, but the far-off fires, for example, of the stars, heaven's slowly turning theater of light, or the wind playful with its breath, or time that's always rushing forward or standing still in the same, what shall I say, moment? What I know I could put into a pack as if it were bread and cheese and carry it on one shoulder, important and honorable, but so small. While everything else continues, unexplained and unexplainable, how wonderful it is to follow a thought quietly to its logical end. I've done this a few times, but mostly I just stand in the dark field in the middle of the world, breathing in and out. Life so far doesn't have any other name breath and life, light, wind and rain. If there's a temple, I haven't yet found it. I simply go on drifting in the heaven of the grass and the weeds. I like that poem because it makes me think now of the ways that I've sought to find a temple and force myself to find it. And yet there, there in the middle of a calm breeze on my front porch swing and buzz of bees and the wind through the branches of the trees, I find some semblance of peace and the presence of the divine. Tomorrow, Thursday, is a day on the Christian calendar marked as the ascension of the Lord. And so for our Lectio Divina tonight, our holy reading, I wanted to listen to the 93rd Psalm. It's the Psalm selected for the ascension of our Lord. And so, as we've done in the last couple of times, I'm going to read it through three times. The first, 
I want you to listen for what one word or phrase the Holy Spirit impresses on you, and then meditate on that word or phrase. So listen now to the 93rd Psalm. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. More majestic than the thunders of mighty waters. More majestic than the waves of the sea. Majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. What one word or phrase is the Holy Spirit impressing upon you right now? And now as I read it through a second time, enter into the passage. What do you feel? What specific situation in your life right now relates to what you feel in this passage? If you have a piece of paper, a journal, something close by, write down uh, maybe a prayer or pray quietly about what this passage makes you feel again as we listen to the 93rd Psalm. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. More majestic than the thunders of mighty waters. More majestic than the waves of the sea. Majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. What do you feel when you hear this passage? And finally, as we read it a third time, what's God's personal invitation for you from the scripture? Again, if you have a, a sheet of paper, a journal, something, you can write down whatever it is God may be saying to you, or, or perhaps take a moment to breathe a prayer of thanks, or simply rest in the quiet of God's presence. As we listen a third and final time to Psalm 93. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed, he is girded with strength. He has established the world, it shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old, you are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice, the floods lift up their roaring, more majestic than the thunders of mighty waves, more majestic than the waves of the sea. Majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. What is God's personal invitation for you from the scripture? And now, as we've done all of these times we've met in our virtual Vespers, our sort of threefold prayer take some time to pray for the church your church here at Williams the church around the world is here closer to home we prepare for an unusual season of worship together but nonetheless a season where God's presence and truth will still be there pray for your church as we seek to reopen pray for your family your friends your your sunday school class members those who come together to worship that rather than being distracted by all the things that seek to divide us we'll 
be reminded of what calls us home, calls us to worship. Pray for others. I know right now, as things are reopening and as we talk about coming back to church, there are those, maybe some of you, who are more than a little anxious about the possibility. Maybe you think, I don't know if I'll ever, I'm not really sure when I'll feel comfortable being back. Things are uncertain, things are scary. Pray for them, pray for those folks. Pray for yourself if that's who you are. Know that that I'm praying for you and that this church, this leadership is praying for you. Pray for the church, pray for others, and of course take some time, friends, to pray for yourself. It's been a long road, and from everything we see and hear and read, it's going to be a bit longer. So pray for yourself. Pray that in the midst of all of this, as we wait to be back in our holy space as a church, that you find your holy space, your sanctuary in your own life. To listen, to be present with God. So let's take some time now to pray that threefold prayer. Pray for the church, for others, and for ourselves. And then I'll close us with our benediction in the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. Holy God, we do thank you for another opportunity to come together in prayer and reflection. A chance, Lord, to find our own sanctuary, whether it's at our kitchen table, maybe in our car, in the driveway, on our front porch, maybe even in our bed. God, we thank you for this time, wherever we're able to take it. To be still for a moment, to pray, and to know that we are joined with others who are praying with us. And God, this evening we pray for your church, both here at Williams and around the world, as so many long to be back with their friends and their family, to be back in a, a space and a time, Lord, that invokes your presence, makes it real for them. But God, we also ask that though we are unable to be present in our buildings, that we don't forget that the church is not brick and mortar, but flesh and blood. And God, we pray for those whose anxiety may be increasing as more and more of us talk about life and going back to normal, whatever that means. God, that those who are afraid, those who are uncertain, God, that you be with them. You help us to be mindful of them, to, to be aware even of our own decisions and aware of our own actions, that they're grounded in love for all of our friends, all of our neighbors. God, we take a moment to pray for ourselves, knowing that the road has already been long, but it still stretches out in front of us a little more. Give us energy, give us strength for the journey ahead. Give us patience as we, Lord, as we try to figure out how we do this going forward. And God, above all, we just thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to be together again. We thank you for the coming opportunity to be together with one another face to face again. But in the meantime, we ask for your presence. We ask to be reminded of who you are. And God, we thank you for these times we can come to pray. And as we end our time together now, help us, Lord, as we pray in the way that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, friends. And I pray God's blessings on you the rest of this week. Until we see each other again, I pray you stay safe. And that you continue to look for ways in your life that God provides sanctuary. And remember, you always remember that God loves you. And there is nothing you can do about it. And even in the midst of this quarantine, may we ask ourselves, what will we do about that? Amen.